Throughout the last seven years, the Bible outlines three distinct phases of divine judgment enacted by God during the tribulation. These stages unfold in order, with each becoming increasingly intense as time goes by. Matthew 24 verses 21 to 29 describes this time, stating, For there will be immense distress, unparalleled since the dawn of creation and never to be seen again. If those days were not cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At the moment, if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe them. Many false messiahs and prophets will appear, performing astounding signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have warned you beforehand. Therefore, if anyone says, he is in the wilderness, do not go out, or he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Just as lightning flashes from the east and is visible in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the dead body is, there the vultures will gather immediately after that distress. This passage emphasizes the severity and deception that will define the tribulation period. Although some aspects of the tribulation are still uncertain, grasping the overall timeline of events is fairly straightforward. Let's take a look at what individuals will face during this period, which involves the opening of the seven seals, the sounding of the seven trumpets, and the pouring out of the seven bowls. In the Bible, the number seven represents completeness, highlighting its importance in the context of the world's end and transformation. The tribulation lasts for seven years, during which the Antichrist will reign. Within this time, there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls or vile judgments that represent God's judgment upon the earth. The consistent appearance of the number seven underscores the finality and totality of these occurrences. The book of Revelation, penned by John after receiving a vision from Jesus Christ, offers a glimpse into the world's future. The initial chapters concentrate on the church, with the anticipated rapture likely taking place in Revelation chapter 4. The majority of Revelation focuses on the judgments that occur after the rapture. In chapter 5, a crucial scroll is introduced, one that only Jesus Christ is able to open. This scroll is inscribed on both sides, indicating its significant and comprehensive content, sealed with seven seals. Each must be opened in order to unveil the complete message within. Seal number one, a white horse. The first seal introduces the four horsemen of the apocalypse. A rider on a white horse appears, holding a bow and setting out to conquer. He wears a crown, leading many to believe he represents the Antichrist. This idea connects to Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, where Jesus returns on a white horse and is described as faithful and true, who judges justly and goes to war. Since the Antichrist wants to present himself as a false Christ, it makes sense that he would try to mimic a savior's traits. The devil, as a deceiver envious of God, attempts to imitate divine qualities. Seal 2, a red horse. The second seal reveals a rider on a red horse, signaling the end of peace on earth. He wields a powerful sword, representing the start of widespread warfare. This aligns with what Jesus mentions in Matthew 24 verses 6 to 7. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't be alarmed, these things must happen. But the end is not yet. Nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Seal 3 – A Light-Colored Horse The pale horse, described as light-colored, looks like a sickly yellow or green, symbolizing dying or decaying flesh. The rider of this horse is named Death, 
and Hades follows right behind. This imagery reflects the large-scale death that will happen during this time. For those already struggling to stay alive, this will be a frightening experience. Death is given the power to take the lives of 25% of the world's population through famine, war, disease, and attacks from wild animals. It's a chilling vision that no book or movie could fully express in its intensity. Seal number 4. A Black Horse The rider on the black horse holds a pair of scales, signifying a severe famine. During this time, basic necessities will become incredibly expensive, forcing people to spend an entire day's wages just to buy essential food for survival. This situation is easy to picture, especially today as grocery prices keep rising. Costs keep increasing while the amount of food you can buy decreases. Imagine how extreme hunger will be then. Spending a full day's pay on just a bowl of oatmeal or a loaf of bread that costs a week's salary. People will not only suffer from the impacts of war, but will also face exhaustion and misery due to the widespread famine. Seal 5. The Martyrs in Heaven We see the souls of those killed for their faith in Christ in heaven. They are given white robes and told to rest. They cry out to God for justice against those who caused their deaths. Their presence indicates that many people will turn to God during the tribulation, choosing to change their lives and place their trust in Him. There are several reasons for this, which we will discuss soon. One major reason is the overwhelming death and chaos of this time, which may humble many and lead them to seek salvation through Christ. Seal 6. Earthquake and Darkness In Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 to 16, the Apostle John describes what he sees when the sixth seal is opened. I looked and saw a massive earthquake. The sun turned dark like coarse cloth, and the moon became blood red. Stars fell from the sky like figs dropping from a shaken tree. The sky rolled back like a scroll, and every mountain and island shifted from its place. The kings of the earth, the wealthy, military leaders, and everyone else hid in caves and among the rocks, saying to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. A massive earthquake shakes the earth, causing mountains and islands to shift. The sky darkens, the sun loses its light, and the moon turns a bloody shade. This darkness is similar to what was experienced during the Exodus. During the sixth seal, people worldwide are overwhelmed by fear and darkness. They hide in caves and plead for safety from the sight of Jesus Christ. Between the sixth and seventh seals, Revelation 7 describes two important events. First, 144,000 men from the tribes of Israel are marked for protection. These men are dedicated servants of God who will share the gospel and bear witness to those still living on earth. After these men are sealed, Revelation 7 reveals another significant event, a large crowd entering heaven. Revelation 7 verses 9 to 10 states, After this, I looked and saw a vast crowd that could not be counted, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and the Lamb. They wore white robes and held palm branches, shouting loudly, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. This immense crowd entering heaven demonstrates that, despite the deaths that occurred during this seven-year period, many will still find salvation. Several factors contribute to this outcome, including the work of the 144,000 the widespread destruction and suffering will lead people to humble themselves and seek forgiveness. The Bible will also play a vital role. Even if the Antichrist tries to eliminate true Christians, 
copies or parts of the Bible may still be available, offering hope and the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. Books, articles, letters, poetry, and other God-honoring materials left behind after the rapture could guide many toward salvation. Additionally, Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 to 3 mentions two witnesses. I was given a measuring rod and told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshippers, but do not measure the outer court, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample the holy city for forty-two months. I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for one thousand two hundred and sixty days, wearing sackcloth. These two witnesses will be crucial in leading people to Christ during the tribulation. Though they will be martyred, the resurrection shortly after will serve as a powerful testament to God's truth. Seal 7 Silence in Heaven When the seventh seal is opened, there is a profound silence in heaven that lasts for about half an hour. This moment of quiet may seem unimportant, but it signifies the calm before the upcoming turmoil. It marks the start of the final seal and the next stage of God's judgment. During this stillness, God reflects on the prayers of His devoted followers. He remembers every tear shed and every prayer offered by those who love and serve Him. He knows every hardship and struggle faced by His people. The purpose of this judgment is to ultimately restore justice and set things right. As the seals are opened, dramatic events unfold. Lightning flashes, thunder crashes, and another earthquake shakes the ground. This sets the stage for the sounding of the trumpets. The Trumpet Judgment Trumpet 1. Hail and Fire When the first trumpet sounds, a third of the earth is set on fire leading to widespread destruction and chaos. Trumpet 2. The sea turns to blood. In Revelation chapter 8 verse 8, it says, The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a big mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea became blood. Many believe this could be a volcano thrown into the ocean, indicating a supernatural event rather than just a regular eruption. This occurrence turns the ocean into actual blood, leading to the death of one-third of sea creatures and the destruction of one-third of the ships at sea. Trumpet 3. A burning star falls. A huge star, looking like a flaming asteroid, falls from the sky and crashes to the ground. It affects one-third of the rivers and springs making the fresh water bitter. This star is called Wormwood, and drinking this bitter water causes many people to die. Trumpet 4. Increased Darkness This trumpet brings even more darkness than the sixth seal. One third of the sun, moon, and stars lose their light, meaning both day and night have 33% less brightness than before. Throughout the tribulation, the increasing darkness reflects not just a lack of light, but also a deeper, symbolic meaning. Trumpet 5. A star falls from heaven. A star falls from the sky, believed to symbolize a demon or even Satan himself. This figure is given a key to unlock a gateway to hell. As a result, smoke billows out like from a furnace followed by terrifying locusts that are worse than those mentioned in Exodus. These locusts destroy plants and torment everyone who does not have God's protection, like the 144,000 we talked about earlier. For five months, they cause pain similar to scorpion stings. While they can't kill anyone, this leads to unbearable suffering, as the Bible explains that during this time, people will wish to die but won't be able to find relief. It serves as a frightening glimpse of hell. Hell is marked by endless torment that never stops and cannot be escaped. This serves as a warning for those who haven't found salvation. However, this doesn't have to be your fate. 
You can avoid it by asking Christ for forgiveness. As Christians, it's our responsibility to share this message with others so they can escape not just the tribulation, but also an eternity separated from God's love. Trumpet 6 The Release of the Four Angels Bound at the Euphrates These angels are demons that God has set apart for this time, leading an army of 200 million horsemen whose horses breathe fire, sulfur, and smoke, resulting in the deaths of a third of the Earth's population. As the number of survivors continues to shrink after these catastrophic events, how will the remaining people react? Revelation chapter 9 verses 20 to 21 says, The rest of humanity who were not killed by these plagues did not turn away from their evil actions or stop worshipping demons and idols made of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that can't see, hear, or walk. They also did not repent of their murders, magic arts, sexual immorality, or thefts. Even in the face of death and despair, many will refuse to turn to God, choosing instead to cling to the very sins that lead to their judgment. It's a sad truth that shows how human nature often holds on to sin, even when it leads to destruction and pushes us away from God. Trumpet 7 The Opening of the Temple of God in Heaven The Temple of God in Heaven opens, accompanied by flashes of lightning, hail, and a powerful earthquake. This moment marks the beginning of the last stage of God's judgment the pouring out of the seven bowls of His wrath. The Seven Bowls of Wrath Bowl 1. Painful Sores When the first bowl is poured out, people who have the mark of the beast suffer from severe, painful sores. Bowl 2. Sea becomes blood. The second bowl is poured into the sea, turning the water into blood and causing all the sea creatures to die. Bowl 3. Fresh water turns to blood. The third bowl is poured into rivers and springs, making all fresh water turn to blood. The angel in charge of this judgment says, You are just, O Holy One, who always has been. You issued these judgments because your followers and prophets were harmed. Now, they receive blood to drink, which is what they deserve. It's important to understand that while God embodies love and mercy, He is also just. For true goodness to be restored, sin must be dealt with permanently. Bowl 4 Scorching Heat The fourth bowl is unexpectedly poured onto the sun, making it burn hotter and scorching those on earth. Even during this suffering, many continue to curse and disrespect God refusing to change their behavior. Bowl 5. Darkness over the Kingdom The fifth bowl is poured out over the throne of the beast during a time when many choose to worship the beast instead of God. This leads to complete darkness covering the entire kingdom. The pain intensifies, causing people to grind their teeth in despair. This darkness adds to their suffering making their existing pain from boils and burns even worse. Some believe that instead of a hot sun, there is no sun at all, resulting in a chilling cold that further heightens their misery. Bowl 6. The Euphrates River Dries Up Next, the Euphrates River dries up, enabling demons to unleash their power as they prepare to fight against the Lord when He arrives. Bowl 7. The Final Judgment The seventh bowl is poured into the air, and a loud voice proclaims, It is done. This triggers the largest earthquake in history, causing Jerusalem to break into three parts and leading to the destruction of other cities. Islands and mountains disappear, leaving a path of ruin. Even in the face of this devastation, the remaining people continue to curse God while enormous hailstones rain down on them. After all this chaos, Jesus returns to restore order. 
believers will reign with him for a thousand years, witnessing true justice and righteous leadership. Afterward, Satan will be imprisoned forever, and the faithful will live with Jesus in a new heaven and earth. In this new place, there will be no sin, sorrow, or pain. If you have not accepted salvation yet, you can do so today by confessing your sins to Jesus and asking for His forgiveness. For those of us who are saved, let this knowledge inspire us to share the message of Jesus with others. These events could happen soon, and we must recognize the urgency of helping those around us.